Okay, welcome to creating the uh, casual florals. Now, the other videos that you've seen so far in the book, those are just general videos that I use, the varnishing, the making background colors, making palettes, uh, stuff. Those are the ones that just are just generally videos that go with the uh, Painted Simply program. And uh, so we just kind of keep them the same all the way through all of our books because it's all basically the same information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you about an hour and a half or so worth of videos. We're going to go through three different videos that apply specifically specifically to the painting of the casual floral. So we already know how to do prepping, prepping. We already know how to mix our palette. Matter of fact, I have my palette to, uh, right here. And this is the one I actually used to paint all the pieces in the book. And it's the one I've been using all year and uh, most of last year a as well. This is uh, one that I uh, uh, I just absolutely love. It. It's, like I say, it's about a year old or so. I have out here my red violet, which we know is cool. It's a cool color. This is my naphthol red light, which is my uh, warmer color. My orange, which is a mixture of my naphthol red light and my Hansa yellow. So I make an orange color off the palette. My Hansa yellow, and then this is my toned Hansa yellow, which is really just a Hansa yellow and some of my brown. My brown is the red and the black, so this is the black. I have my white and my green that I make up. Now, I like to mix up uh, the uh, toned dark green and the uh, toned yellow green, and then I have my uh, thetal blue. I really never use this. This is a thetal blue and black. It's the dark blue. It's more for rose molly. But there's some other colors in there that, I, you know, there's a medium blue, and then there's a, a toned dark red and a toned medium red that are on the Painted Simply palette that I use in other videos, that I use in other books, especially the rose molly ones, that I really didn't use at all. Well, I didn't. I didn't use at all in this book, so you really don't need to add them. And besides, we're going to do a lot of brush mixing with this. Keep everything casual. And uh, so you want to keep your colors as soon as easy as possible. The uh, one thing I do recommend, though, is mix up some of those greens because we have a lot of flowers with a lot of leaves, and the variation of those leaves are very important. And by having your, your leaves, these greens, mixed out here like this, that's going to help you uh, quite a bit. And I also put out like two uh, containers of white. I can put white out here and stuff anywhere on the camera. I just pick out a couple containers of it and um, uh, just to because uh, I go through quite a bit of white. Okay. Now, as we go through some of the painting techniques, what I'm going to do in this uh, video, keep this just a little short, I'm going to show you a few things that I think are very important about creating casual flowers. First off, when I was, a, you know, I've been a decorative painter for 35 years, and I've gone through many different phases of decorative painting, through my stroke work and through my rose modeling and everything. And what I have found over the years is that the stroke work is great, and I love it. It's one of my favorite styles to paint. Matter of fact, rose modeling is my favorite of all styles to paint. But I've started to, I, I couldn't get my flowers casual because everything that I was doing was always working the brush in strokes. So I want to show you first how basically a a la prima painter paints it. And what I did was I went all the way back to the 19th century, through the late 18th century and the 19th century, and through the impressionistic painters, and studied a lot of different painters and how they use their brush, how they hold their brush different, how they use their brush to break some of these stroke habits that I have. Now I'm a stroke painter when I want to be a stroke painter and I'm a casual painter when I want to be a casual painter but it is a process it is a process of learning it is a process of habits and as I teach this to so many students around the world especially my stroke students have a little bit of a hard time with this especially if you've been painting longer have a harder time with it because you have habits you have stroke habits. We feel we have to fill in these lines. And so we have to learn to paint a little bit different way. So sometimes I'm a stroke painter, sometimes a casual painter. I want to show you how a casual painter paints, and uh, then we'll go through a couple of paintings with you here. And then you'll have all these pieces of practice, but it's going to take some practice. It's going to take quite a few uh, paintings to break some of your habits. So first off, this is just a board. I'm just going to be painting here on a board. As a matter of fact, we can come here just a little bit closer. And on this board, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put down a simple little base coat. Now, the two main painting brushes in this entire painting are your number four fusion here. And I do this because I use this very casually and I sketch in everything. And I use the little number four round like this. I use this on painting the bird and then sometimes on a stem or something like that where I have a lot of detail or something to a painting, I will use the round. Now, these are two brushes that I use in the rose modeling one also. So uh, the round 
round. I love this round. I love this round because it has a very, very fine point. It has a point on it just like a liner brush. So uh, it, it's a great brush for that. So what, and then I also use my three quarter inch brush for all the paintings where I do a lot of manipulation of the background. There is one brush that you, you just go grab any kind of brush. This is my old base coat brush. It's an old, old base coat brush. You can use anything. You can use a sponge like I show you in the prepping just to prep something. Uh, sponges work really well or base coat brushes here. I just happen to have this one out uh, from the painting of the book. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that just to, to block in some color. But anything will work. You know, a paper towel works. Sometimes I use a paper towel. Now, in the instructions, I always say <clears throat> in all of the lessons, I always say, you go through first and you base coat it basically with a medium white and sealer. That just basically, this is a plate that I did. And you can see I just have a little white scratched over the top of it. Basically what I do is I come in and I base coat something and uh, with a little bit of paint and a little sealer. And the sealer just help, helps to harden up the surface a little bit. And uh, then I sand it lightly and then I'm ready to paint. Sometimes I will pre-mix up. Now this is just a container mixed up of, of a green color. And what I do with the color that's like this and honestly this is an old palette i take all my old palette colors that i have from the six colors and i dump them all into here add a little bit of light primer or a little sealer just something to make it a little harder it doesn't have to be perfect because none of it has to really be perfect you don't have to worry about it why because we're going to varnish everything when we're all done if when you varnish something like I show you in the varnish video that is completely sealed that is completely protected so you don't need to if you're going to varnish something you don't need to really add a lot of sealer to the paints or something like that beforehand okay so that's just double kill and it's not necessary with the more modern uh, more modern um, uh, acrylics okay with older generation acrylics acrylics that are 20 years old yes with newer generation acrylics, no, you don't need to do that because these paints all by themselves are already hard enough to be painted by themselves. You don't even need to varnish them, okay? They have enough polyurethane in them. So what I'm going to do here, and one of the things I show you in, in, in all of the steps is I usually, I generally base coat something, then I seal it. That, that just gets me started. And what I'll do is I'll pick out 10 pieces in the day and I'll base coat them all. And then I have a stack of paintings that are ready to go. And then I can just take any color. Here I'm just going to take some of this green. And I just put some of a, a color down over the surface. And you'll see me do this many, many, many times. Let this focus up here for just a second. You'll see me do this in uh, many, many, many times here in a painting. I will uh, do this. And what this does is this allows me to um, work into something that is wet. It allows me to work into a, a wet background. And through most of the techniques that you're going to do in the paint, it's simply you want to work into a wet background. Okay. Now, if you have your pattern on, if you're a younger painter, you're going to put your pattern on. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add a little bit of extender and you're going to uh, an extender medium. It's just a clear liquid. I usually keep it in a little container like this and get it dirty. And you can just brush mix a little bit of that extender right into the surface of anything that you're going to be painting here. Just brush mix that in and that's just going to slow. What that's going to do is just slow down the drying time of your paint. If you keep this out like this, it'll be out here like this for months. So it's never, it's never going to go anywhere. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. So extender at any time. But <clears throat> what I like to do is I like to have a light coating on, on the surface. If you get too, uh, too much onto the surface, just take a paper towel and just lightly wipe over the surface with your paper towel. Just so you can see what, if your pattern lines are going to be underneath here. You're going to see what you're, what you're going to have. But on the surface, you can see I have just a real light coat here on the surface and that's what I, I like to uh, uh, that's where I like to have you know on my on, on my surface here okay so that light coat it, it just gives you something to paint it into and it gives you something that you'll have a little bit more control over your color now just real quickly what I'm going to do is just sketch you out a blossom and like a little rose and show you a couple of the techniques here uh, that we will do uh, on our palette. First, you have your palette. Set that someplace that you can reach. And what you want to do when you set up your, when you're setting up your painting area, one of the things that you want to do is you don't want to reach very far, especially if you're going to paint ca uh, paint casually. So don't make it so that you have to reach real far, because what that does is that kind of stiffens you up, 
and if you have to reach so I'm going to move everything here a little bit closer and so I can show you here as well but you don't want to have to uh, reach very far to get anything now this is my little number four fusion and I love it and let's say for example uh, first off I'm going to uh, just do a rose and this can be a blossom or a rose but I just want to show you some of the techniques that we're going to do as we paint uh, as we paint through first let's step in just a little bit more here okay and what I'm going to do is I have my background. My, my background's nice and wet here. I'll just take a little bit of extender and just a little dirty color. Uh, I love to have dirty colors. Let's paint kind of a white rose here, maybe a white and yellow rose so you can see some of the color. So I'll take some tone-based yellow out here. And one of the things, one of the first things we're going to do in the, in the painting is model our brush. Now, traditionally what a, an artist does is we tend to mix up the colors here until we have a solid medium color. And then we put that everywhere in there and it just has no interest. What we do in Paint It Simply is a little bit different. We're going to take down our color, our two colors here that I say, and then I'm going to tell you to model them together. Now in modeling, what you don't do is stroke. You don't want to see anybody stroke on their palette. Uh, and stroking is this, when you're pulling these long things. If you're seeing a lot of this on your on your palette, that's a habit, and we don't want you to do that anymore. That's just a habit, and you've got to break that. What I want you to do is take your brush, take your colors, and tap them together like this. Model them together, okay? Now, what that does is that gives you a brush here that the colors are modeled on. Sometimes Hansa Yellow will come out a little bit more. Sometimes the uh, tone base yellow will come out a little bit more, but you tap them together like this, and that models them up. And so when I'm when I'm applying this color, see sometimes you'll get a little dark, sometimes you'll get a little light. The colors will come out a little bit different. And and what I do is you see I roll my brush different ways here as I go to base something in. So let's just say I'm going to base in like a small rose here like this, okay? And so here comes the rose. Now the rose is a circle shape. You'll learn that in later lessons, okay? But uh, the rose here is this kind of a circle shape. It could be anything. You can paint this as a blossom. Matter of fact, we could step over here to the side and let's just do a little blossom over here also as well. Right in here. Let's do it this way. Set that in. This is what I love to do too. If I want a flower to be soft, one of the techniques you're going to see is just softening the edge. See how I softened this edge? Now that is called a lost edge. The lost edge disappears. That's very important. So what you got to do is you got to always have a paper towel in your hand here. Okay. And then you always got to be wiping your hand and using your hand. I use my finger a lot. And one of the techniques we do is called pushing color, pushing it around. I use my finger a lot to to draw stuff when I want to keep it uh, really modeled. So let's say, for example, I want to come in and start the center, a real nice dark center. I will pick up some uh, red violet here, maybe a little bit of brown with it this time. Sometimes I use brown. And I'll model those together. I'll come in here into the center, and I'll just tap that around. Now, I can, and you can see, I didn't stroke. See how I pushed it around. I pushed the brush around like this. We don't stroke like this. The stroke makes it stiff for movement. We do sometimes give this type of movement, but we don't want to do it all the time. I will wipe my brush, sometimes model with a little softer color, and move this around to just tap it up here like this, so I keep that, that darkness right down there in the center. Now, sometimes I'll take my finger... And I'll push this around to give some movement this way, around and around movement like this, to start the rose. Okay, so I have some nice gentle movement there. Let's tap into a little dark down here. The, the rose will have the, the bottom of the bowl here as well. So we'll just paint in with very casually like this. And we can push it around if we want to have some of that dark come in like this. So you can see where some of that dark is. We can then soften the edge, wipe my finger and soften this edge to cause this to recede back here a little bit. So I have a heavier area up here. Let's grab just a little bit more paint here. And I, I'm using a lot of paint. I use a lot of paint. Now, if you're going to, the first thing too, and I say this in the palette and I say this everywhere, if you're using a cheaper bottle of acrylic paint, you cannot do these techniques with it, okay? I have lots of other books 
lots of other DVDs that I paint with bottled acrylics that I show lots of wonderful things. Go look to those. But these techniques require the Heritage Multimedia paint. It is a thicker paint. It is a heavy body paint, okay? When, for example, you, you look over here to these whites. Look how thick my white is, okay? You can't do that with a bottled acrylic white. This is my white. This is the lofting that I have here on my white. A, a, a uh, bottled acrylic paint does not have the body to it to paint any of these types of techniques, okay? So you're just wasting your time. It will not work. So you know, just like we change brushes to do a different technique sometimes, you need to change your paint to do a technique, okay? If I could do this technique with those other bottle acrylics, I would have done them 20 years ago. But these are newer generation paints that are designed to do this. So I'm going to take this now. I have two ways of softening this. I could model in here to a little medium tone like this and just come right across like this. Now, see, a bottle acrylic won't be able to paint out that shadow like that. They don't have enough body of the pigment. I could then wipe my brush. Sometimes I'll do this. This is called incorporating the color incorporating the color in is just wiggling your brush like this. You'll see this many times in the lessons. You'll see me say incorporate the color where I'm putting it that way uh, and wiggling it back and forth like that to incorporate, okay? So I put the color on. Now, so I have uh, the areas here. I'm going to have the reaching petals out here. I'm going to have the inside petals. Maybe I want a little more dark here into the center area here, and I can just drag it around, tap this around, and move it around with my fingers a little bit here. Okay. Now, as I come to the front, I just wipe my brush. And notice I never clean my brush. I don't, throughout this entire book, you will not clean your brush. Okay. I'll, you'll see me wipe my brush. I say all the time, wipe my brush. And generally, as I, if I take a stroke, I always wipe my brush. Okay. I'm constantly wiping my brush because I keep it, the wiping of the brush lets me feel the surface and get exactly what I want inside this brush. But I don't go over and reach it out. As a matter of fact, I have no water here, so I'm not doing that at all. Okay. So I'm going to take some white down here, and what I'm going to do is just model that into some of my yellow, maybe a bit of Hansa here, and we'll model this into the brush. Tap it into here like this. So I have the brush here now modeled with yellow and light, and you see that, okay? Now what I'm going to do is just use the chisel. So this is a very important part of the of the uh, um, of the technique. Sometimes I will come in with just the model brush like this and draw with the chisel to put the petal edges here. Like I'm going to come right around this circle here and I'll put some petal edges to the rose, just like that, okay? Then what I do is just wipe my brush lightly like this, take away some of the exit, extra, and I just pull down a bit like this to incorporate the that color into this color down in through here. So I have the edge here. Now sometimes I will, you'll see me, you'll, you'll see in the instructions, you'll see where I say edge the brush. Now, to edge the brush, what we do is we're going to slide right in here like this. I'm not going to stroke as much as we're just going to pick up a little bit of the white right on the corner of the brush like that. So you see a little white on the corner of the brush like this. Now, what that edging does is it allows me to use the chisel and get a nice fine line like a little bit of a... Of a um, a liner brush here so I can make a fine line like this to draw more petals if I need to so I, you'll see me say edge the brush and sometimes I'll just come right out here like this to pure white and just tap it right in here to pure white it's not a side load you're picking up a big big dollop of just the white right here and I'll use that to edge the brush like this to draw on some of these petals out here to the outside edge here like this and that puts those on. Then I'll wipe my brush, and then I can model the brush with some of that nice light color. Just model it, just tap it through. Maybe I want this a little brighter yellow here, so I'll pick up a little Hansa, model that through, and then I'll just wiggle this brush in like this to incorporate that. Now, if I come down here and I hit that shadow like that, I've picked up shadow onto my brush. You see that shadow? And if I take it back up here, I put shadow back up there. So if you don't want that to happen, if you get down low, constantly just wipe your brush. Just tap your brush and, and wipe your brush like this, and then you'll incorporate those, those colors in there without getting too much of that around. The other thing that I'll do is, you'll see me say push. I'll push color up like this 
from the shadow. I'll push color up, sometimes incorporating it like that. But as you go through the lessons, so you, you put it on these edges, then you're softening these edges. Then the next thing you'll see me say in a lot of casual flowers, I'll say now you start to build the color. Build, build, build. Build the flowers. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of our yellows here. Just like this, we'll incorporate a little bit of white into that, and I'll come back again, strike. Now, you'll see me a lot of times say strike. When I strike like this, I'm putting on a heavy bit of the light color across like that. Then I'll wipe my brush, and I'll say incorporate it down into that color, just like this. So I'll strike it like this, and then I'll incorporate it down. And I'll get very light with my brush, and just let your brush move around a bit. And so you'll see me quite a bit say strike it and then incorporate that down. And if you get too close to that shadow, just keep putting that shadow in. Okay. And then you can start to soften and build these. Now, if I want to, I'll, I will just wipe my brush. Stroke. Now I can start adding strokes and streaks and building this front petal up, sometimes curving it. Stuff like this. I'm starting to build. What I'm starting to do is physically lighten and build the flower. I will come out here onto the outside the same way and start to build up this, this petal here. Just like this. Start to build the color into this, into this flower. And then I'll let it kind of and wiggle it sometimes and move it some different directions. I'm incorporating and I'm incorporating and building this flower. That's what I'm doing is I'm building it. Okay. And do it different directions. Put this in and just wiggle it like this. Okay. And put this in like this and wiggle it like this and paint it. And just paint it. You know, slide it in and out here and just paint it. And what I'm doing is I'm building more light to the front and letting it recess, uh, recede as it goes back around to that other side. So I'll build this several times here. And build this several times till I start to get this rose light as I like to have it out here. And I'll build this several times. And you can come back here I'll have this edge just a little more white. You can come back like right up through here and edge these back petals and just pull them down a little bit and add more to them too if you want to build this flower. You can take some of your yellows like this. Just tap in through, model your yellows. Let's get a little Hansa. And you can wiggle some of that through here and just to lighten it up and give a little more movement to the inside. Maybe just an edge, just an edge, tap into an edge here and get a little bit and just do little tiny strokes, kind of like into the inside there. But when you get really good, you can edge, you edge like this so you have that little corner of that edge. Just pick up a little and you can come in just even like this and add in more you know, forward petals, other little things. You can you can draw all kinds of things going on. But I really like to build up the front of the flower here. Now, let's say you get too much. You get too much light. You have two choices. You can uh, stroke in like this. You can lift out, which is, you know, lifting out that way. The other thing that, that I do and I do a lot of is I know I have shadow underneath there. So I lift it off with my finger this way and bring my shadow back. If you get too much paint, I will lift off like this. So I like to paint sometimes after I get a lot of color on like this. I like to model it up and soften up the flower like this. You can see you get this beautiful modeling that comes to the rose here now from your your finger before you go to any of your your uh, lights and your final edges and stuff you can just model everything up with your finger there and get a nice movement to your flower a nice shadow I know that that shadows underneath there and I can just bring that out and then so, you, you know, use the combination of your finger and your brush, and that's going to give you a good look. Then as you start to paint, one of the other things that we're going to do, especially um, in some of the other lessons as we get past Lesson 5 and in Lesson 6 and stuff, I'm going to start asking you to carry color. So you'll look. Maybe I'll tap into a little orange or something like this if I have another little orange here. And I'll put some of the other colors in, that I that are in my composition in as accents to these objects because that's going to add more interest to them, and 
And then I'll start to, if it's on a rose or a larger thing, I'll start to weave petals. We'll do that in another video. I just want to, with this one, show you some of the techniques that I'm using here in the painting. So let's say that I have a, a blossom here that I want to paint. I put a little color down. I'll put a little center down like this. Like say I'm going to have the center there. Then I'll pick up a little color and then I will pick up a little edge like this. I will edge a little bit. Just edge. Just pick up so you can see the texture of it right here. And I use that edge to kind of draw the petals that I want to have. Let's just say I'm going to have some petals around like this. Let that disappear into there. I might have some petals on my flower like this. Okay. And then what I do is just model my brush with some light color, maybe a little bit of the light in here like this. And I'll you can push it. You can push it back and forth and wiggle it. I love to wiggle the brush, especially on the beginning of the painting here, and just wiggle this like this to build and build the start to build the shape of this little blossom here. We'll paint a blossom and stuff with you with the next uh, uh, with the next video, but it's this edging here becomes very important because that edging that you have, which is one of the most important techniques of this, of this uh, creating casual flowers, this edging is like your little liner work. You can draw petals in like this, lighten your brush, and then instead of stroking all the time, wiggle your brush. Sometimes pull out, pull out with your brush. Sometimes push in. You can do different things, but don't always, what happens, this is generally decorative painting. We go like this, and 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 like this. And what happens is that petal looks stiff. It looks stiff because we're stroking, and we're stroking, and we're stroking, and we're stroking. With painting casual flowers, you don't. You kind of sketch it all in there, okay? I may take and go, oh, boom, I want to make a strike of the color this way, which is opposed to this. So if I wanted to loosen this up, I'd strike the color this way like this. Then I'd wipe the brush, and then I'd incorporate that color into it. And I'll get a little, see how it gets more modeled in there. That's what you want to look for. And then I can come back in and re-edge it a little bit. You can add a few streaks. I'm not saying don't streak. You'll see me sometimes say, streak it in just a little bit to get some movement to that particular petal. But we don't want to get so much movement that it becomes stiffening to the flower. Okay, so we'll have a little blossom start to slowly appear here, just like that, as it starts to come out. And so you have that. Another painting, another thing that is very, very important here um, before we close out this video, is you, uh, you'll see me take in, and, and I use this a lot. It's called negative painting, and I usually do it with the leaves. Sometimes I'll take my larger brush, and instead of always creating the edge, what the artist can do is with their next color underneath, so say you're going to have a blossom or something like this, you can come in and shape up the edges of this blossom with the color that you're going to have underneath. So the a lot of times in a lot of paintings, what the artist will do is we paint the background at the same time, at the same time, and you'll see me say, drag it down. You'll see this a lot. You'll see me say, put the colors on, put some greens, drag it down. I put greens on because if I want to make this, let's say I want to make this edge of this petal over here, very, look very transparent. What I'll do is take a little green right into that flower and just soften the edge like that and then come back in and just edge just a little bit and put the edge back on and then that makes that petal look transparent on that side. Okay, so it's a crossing of colors. And for many years, I was so stiff with colors, filling in lines so perfectly that my flowers look very stiff. And so now we want to do is get casual and get casual. Use your hand, use your brush, sketch it around, let the colors cross and flow across each other, then use the edge to come in and define some stuff with it. Okay, let's go over and uh, to the next little video. We'll paint, I'll show you a little bit of a blossom. I'll paint a, a little blossom for you, a set some blossoms. So you practice that edge and uh, then you're on to lesson number one. And then later on in the book, I'll come back with you and I'll show you how to paint a rose again with some weaving of some petals. Okay, see you then, next video.